so far for you? It's been a, it's been a lifestyle change. <laughs> I mean, you're going all day. I gave everything up, John. I gave all my other responsibilities up, and I'm just concentrating on football. It's, it's, it's an unbelievable profession. If you want to do it right, you got to put unbelievable hours. I mean, that's the way it is. So it's it's all football we're working at. It's it's a tough job when you get hired late to put a new offense, a new defense in, and we didn't even address the special teams game, which we'll start doing. And I'm learning the players. I don't know. I haven't been here in seven years. I don't know about kids. I mean, I know who they are. Some of them I have for driver education. But I'm learning about their skills, their work ethic. You know, we, there, and there's another aspect of them I don't know until we put pads on. And that's when it counts. This is touch football. This, you can see a little bit their athleticism, but you want to see them with pads on. So what do you get out of something like this, a seven and seven year old? Well, it's good for the receivers to run and be in shape and, and the DBs to recognize some things. That, and we haven't spent a lot of time on defense. You, know, you have to do one thing at a time. And I really worked hard on the offense. And we just started doing some defense. And I think we're behind, but I got to keep working on that. And, you know, obviously there's so much to do. It's it's coming, but that's what it is. Now you're saying about the lifestyle change. You think uh, you made the right decision to come back and enjoy? Well, yeah. Well, here's what happened. They couldn't get anyone. I mean, Gary was, Gary left and went up up home. Got a good deal up there, and uh, no one no one wanted it. I mean, the varsity staff they called it, asked every coach, and they wanted me to return, and the kids wanted me to return, and the school board. Want to be there, so I, I told my do it on an interim basis. And by an interim, I'm talking year to year. They wanted me to go two years. So I said, we'll see. If the health holds is as good as it is now, you know, we'll, we'll do it. Have you thought about another year yet, or is this one just starting so much that you don't really have time to think about it? I don't have time to, John, honest to God, it's been such, there's so much work to do, you don't think about those things. And in fact, I like the sophomore class. That's, that's a great class. There's more speed in that class collectively than I've, I don't remember a team that, that had that kind of speed. You know what I'm saying? It's not one of them. There's about six of them that can run. I mean, they can fly. Does that sort of make you interested? Like, hey, maybe I'll stick more than a year, more than two, maybe three, see those kids well, there? Well, the thing with me is the health. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, okay, I'm, I'm, everything's great. Everything is great at this point, not going to move. My weight is down, the, the lowest it's been in 15 years. And the blood pressure is good. And, I mean, every, all the readings are good. The blood test I just had, and, you know, the, the, the cancer is behind me. And I think right now it's just, I feel good, I feel good you know. But it's, it's a year-long thing, so you got to go every day for the year. And then next year's another year, every day. It doesn't end. But that's why I'm saying that now, next year I'll be 69 and then 70. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, so you gotta, you gotta take a year to year. And, and I told Burwick, I told him about the same token, if you can get someone, you get a guy you want, you know, I, I wouldn't have any problems stepping aside. Because I'm, I think we're gonna have a, I think we're gonna point this program in the right direction. Okay, we're gonna, we're going to do our best to keep it going and get some wins. Now, obviously, with all the state titles you want here, I mean, people think that just because George Curry's back, here comes another state title. Oh, yeah, that, that's automatic. They think that. It doesn't happen that way. You know what I mean? you got to win your, you got to win the first game first and the second. Then if you build some momentum, hope you can win the districts. And when you get in the district, then you go from there. you got to stay healthy. You know, you can't lose any players. And, uh, I mean, it's, there's some teams out there that they're pretty darn good. And although I know they talk about Archbishop Wood, they get a lot of talent that moves in there. Division one talent. When we won our state titles, we beat those kind of teams. We beat our equipment with 11 Division one kids. We beat Perry with six Division one kids. Rodney Rutherford, Robbie Butler. Half those kids are in the NFL. I turned to Detroit Lions, right corner. 
Robbie Butler. He was the white out uh, DB in it. He's the guy John Bain is being on the post corner to beat 17-14. So we played those kind of guys. We played them. And we're going at St. Ignatius. Our kids played. So I I'm, I don't think that you, just because they get all division ones, we don't think we can't win. We could win. I mean, you may not have the athletes that we cannot fox. We cannot fox people. But the bottom line is they have to come around and learn the system, and we're not there yet. It's going to take a while. How have the kids responded to your return? And They're working hard. Every day. I got 60, 70 kids here every day. So they want to play. So that's the way it is. Look at this guy. The voice. The coach. What's going on, buddy? Hey, you knew I was going to miss this today. No, the one, the one I was thinking is having CJ, you know, coaching your grandson. Is that, how was that? Well, it's, here's what I always say about a coach, coaching his son. It's a great experience if he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Coach Cosby he was an outstanding player, tough kid, good wrestler. It was easy. That, Jazz Dimmer, I could talk to him, he coached five of his boys. He said, it was easy, they're a pretty good football player. I think that's the key, he's, he's going to do well. He's number three in his class, he's a, he's a brilliant kid, knows the system, and, and he's a rookie, I mean, but he's, he's not, he can handle himself well, and he runs well. For, so. Do you think there's either pressure on him because you're his grandfather? And oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, but his dad works with him with that, because his dad went through it. And, and I'm not gonna ask him to win the game. We got a lot of kids that are pretty good. You know what I mean? We got, we got a running game, too. I think the running game's gonna be very good. And then, uh, so the passing game, we got some good skill kids. Just get the ball. It's all gonna hinge on our line. I don't, again, we have to see when we put pads on what kind of football team. This is, I call this touch football. In fact, they yelled at a kid because he ran into somebody. He didn't want to film. <laughs> CJ grew up watching the Penguins, so you know he's got that extra edge. Hey, what, what was it like, though, when the first time you came back and sat back in that office? Well, first of all, it was, it was like, it was eerie. You know, I mean, it was a eerie feeling. It was a good feeling, but I said, holy shit, I'm here. I had to pinch myself. But. It set in every day. I just said, so wait, I'm, I'm here. Now I got I to enforce my personality on this program. Okay? Because it is true. <laughs> so that's the way it is. That's one last thing you're, you know, when you're off, you're working the media, doing TV and, and radio and that. Did you get a different perspective of what those get, you know, from that side of the. Oh yeah. yeah, your job's a lot easier. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. I had two radio shows. I did a radio show every Thursday with Jimmy Doyle, an hour and a half talk show, and we did a game of the week if I wasn't doing a TV game. And we did two TV shows. And it was great because you cover everyone, and when you're in that booth, you're analyzing, and you got all the answers. It's easy. <laughs> you know, hey. Oh, they're doing this. If they can just see that there's nobody on the backside, somebody has to see. You could say, you know, it's interesting. And my job in the radio was always trying to get the people to get a picture of what was going on there. So I really enjoyed that. But so, um, now it's it, I enjoy football. So you know, how did you fill your time away from football other than doing the, you know? The I teach driver and I still do that. Yeah. I work for part time for the CSIU. And, Nice part of that job, I name my hours. I can go when I want to go. So it's something to do. I mean, I don't sit home. I always make sure I'm not home. <laughs> I mean, Is there a reason for that? No, oh, I mean, I just like to be busy. I can't sit still. So, I, so between driver ed and the, and the media job, it can be busy. I like that. Now, now with this football, I may do driver ed on weekends. Or in the evening, for an hour. 
There's one thing you'd say to Berwick fans. What, what could they expect this year when you guys take the field against Crestwood? Well, they expect our kids to be aggressive. Okay, you're seeing an aggressive football team. Team that won't quit. And uh, I think you're seeing some exciting football. I mean, it's, we're going to, I, see, I think we're going to see a team that will get better every week because they're going to learn more and more of their system. There's things that I have planned down the road, but you can't do it all at once. We'll just keep adding. We got about a third of our playbook in. So you can't put it all in for an open game. I mean, if they know the one third solidly and they really have it done, then we can add more things. So that's what we're, that's what we're looking at. Thank you.